Hello? Bob, Mr. President. You're not going back to bookkeeping, I gather. In what respect? Do you hear what Goldwater said? No. He said that they ought to send you back to bookkeeping. He said that uh, that's what he said about you about a week before the election. And I, I asked Lady Bird's manager here this morning uh, what he said. He was quoting it directly when I was bragging on you. And he says that you tell the secretary when you talk to him that, uh, by God, Goldwater don't need a bookkeeper. <laughs> he, he hadn't got enough to count. Well, that's sort of a cut. I, I haven't enjoyed anything more in my adult life. Well, it? that's a great tribute to you, great tribute well, to you. Every, every... Uh, you and Lady Bird. No, no, every time we, every place we talked, uh, every time we, we brought up the question, why well, we just, we were glad to meet him on that ground, and and uh, uh, we did, and uh, uh, so it ought to make you and your little daughters feel mighty good. Uh, and uh, you don't know how good it makes me feel. Well, you're nice to say that, but it was a tremendous accomplishment, Mr. President. I think the newspaper reports and the columnist reports that it's the greatest political achievement of this century. Well, it? it was. If it, it was, it's on count of men like you, because it was a record that you made, and what you're doing, and I may want you to come down, I don't want you to wear yourself out, but if I'm going to stay down here four or five more days, I'm going to want you to come down and uh, some, some of the time there, I'll come on back up there one of the Oh, two. no, I think that we all agree here, I say all, I mean Dean Rusk and Mac and I, who've talked about it several different times, all hope and pray you'll stay down there and get some rest for a change, and it's very easy for me to come down, Mr. President, no problem at all. Well, I'll be in touch with you probably tomorrow. Tell Marge hello, and Nellie and John were out yesterday, and they were... A picture of all of you. The first race of times, it was magnificent. I was so pleased I came out to see you. The way you train them, it's bugger the way you turn them out of that Defense Department. He, <laughs> he damned if he didn't, uh, he beat his man over a million votes. I saw it. I thought it was magnificent. But you pulled Yarborough, too. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad. John wasn't glad about that, but <laughs> Yarborough votes the ticket with us, and... Uh, oh, uh, sure. You need him in the Senate. That's right, and John doesn't have to be there. I and. Uh, put up very conservatively oriented voter in the Senate. We'll do a lot better with uh, with Yarbrough and Bobby and uh, uh, the uh, boy Montoya than we sure. did with Meacham and with Bush and with Keating. Sure. No question. And uh, we got, I think, going to have 35, 40 new ones over in the House. It'll make it a lot easier going. Oh, you got rid of Alger and Foreman. That's a tremendous Yeah, uh, Yeah, you can forget about Fort Bliss. <laughs> 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 but uh, we... Uh, we, uh, oh, I want to tell you about your old boy in Orlando. Nixon carried Florida three to one. Yeah. Three to one, the Orlando Central Florida. This time, we lost it 50.1. We got 49.9. Yeah. But it changed from three to one to 50-50. And he just took them on in that paper every day in the Birchites, and it's just a haven of them. It's just a... It, it's worse than Dallas. Of course, John went up there and spent some time with those businessmen in Dallas. Got them to see the light. We've got to do that. I want you to get searching now for some good talent for us because we've got to bring some good men in. There are a lot of them that want to go home and these other departments. And I want you to, I want you to be my number one man to help me find some folks. Well, I talked to Bill about it uh, yesterday, and uh, he was going to give me a list of the uh, openings you were particularly interested in. I'll, I'll we got undersecretaries and assistant secretaries all over the lot that could be developed into secretaries, and you got to get some of them of the type that you had with Gil Patrick uh, or Vance that could uh, step into other things that they were called upon, and that uh, uh, we've got them in agriculture, and we've got them in interior, and we've got them in commerce. And, uh, I want to clean out some of them too, and. Uh, so we got a lot to do, and um, you just get ready to do it, my young man. We'll get, we'll get to work on it. Bill said he'd send me the list. What about Vietnam? Uh, Mac and uh, Dean and I spent uh, about an hour and a half on it today, and, and it's, it's just a worrisome problem. None of us have a pat answer that we're ready to give you yet. I think we will be ready to talk about it early next week. The, uh, I, I don't think there's any strong incentive for trying to go in and clobber China at the moment, other than in the strictly military organization, and I'm sure we can sit on top of that. I do think there's a general feeling that the current course is, is leading to, uh, to uh, some kind of a form of accommodation with the Chinese, probably through a popular front government initially, and if this is not good, 
and that there may be something in between the current course and this Barber China school that will help us uh, strengthen our position there. And this is what Dean and McInerney are trying to work out. We'll work on this weekend. Okay, Bob, give him a left march. I shall, and same to Lady Bird, my friend. Bye. Thank you.